Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, it's a very sunny, beautiful day here in Minnesota, which is where I live. If you're new to the channel, hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. So it's warm and muggy, so my eyes will be fluttering a bit because of the allergies and such. So it doesn't mean anything, just so you know. Other than I have a human body and my eyes are sensitive to the light and I don't want to have sun, uh, sunglasses on for a conversation today. So aside from that, we're going to have a bit of a therapy session with Robin Williams in the afterlife because you know how much Robin seems to be kind of fitting that role for me lately. Now, this kind of a video isn't a direct channeling video where in the past you can watch the playlist for Robin Williams and you can see some conversation about him and his particular real life human experiences. This kind of video here at Above Life Channel is a channeling video with with Robin that you can have for yourself. I'm showing you how it works for me when I'm actually having conversation with the afterlife for me, for my advisement, for guidance, for connection. So you can utilize your psychic gifts in a very real human day-to-day -day life and for therapy, like I'm going to do with Robin and you get to watch, okay? So it's part of this is to encourage you to not feel like you're crazy if you have spiritual connection, whether you do it through your journals or through music or through meditation, doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter what other people think really, after all, does it? So when you're dead, it doesn't matter what other people think. When you're a baby, it doesn't matter what other people think. There are times in our lives throughout our experience as a transcendent spirit, as a soul, living in a body or outside of a body where we really don't care what other people think. So I'm going to ask you to tap into that and use that as a lens as you watch this conversation today. Okay. I have a lot in my heart today. I would love to chat with you about a very interesting concept. And I've talked about it before on Fairy Grasshopper, my YouTube channel where I vlog and talk about intuitive and spiritual topics like this and real life stuff. I wanna talk about gender. I would like to talk about gender. He says, oh, I know all about that. And he's like standing in a kitchen, like making pancakes and making eggs and bacon and sausages and all that. He says, there's a variety of things. When it comes to gender, there's a variety he says, as you know, as you well know, Bridget, and you're right, I do. I've been learning about the wide range of gender affiliation, identification, and expression. And I find there's a ton of information, you guys. So if any of you are, that are watching are part of genders that are not the two-party system, the male or the female. Hey, this video is for you, okay? Actually, this video is for you to share with all your friends who don't get it, all right? I'm not saying I get it because I don't get it because I'm talking to Robin Williams, but I'm open to getting it, to understanding, right? So, Robin, what I know is I understand from what I have learned intellectually. Yeah, I'm reading a book about it, so there you go is that gender has a wide range. It's not just a two-party system, the masculine, the feminine, it's a, variety, it's a, it's a wide range of, of, it's a wide range, let's say that. So, and I understand that there are different facets like gender expression, gender identity, um, I also understand that gender is separate from sexual orientation. So just because someone is identifying with a gender that's outside the two-party system <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean that they're on the LGBTQ plus or in alignment with the community or expressing 
their sexual orientation that way in relationship, etc. These two things stand alone, yet there is also a ton of overlap, which thus creates the confusion, people. That's what's creating the confusion. Believe me, I need to understand this stuff, and so I'm working on it. Oh boy, I have sunscreen in my eye. That's lovely. Okay. Let's keep talking, Rob. Come on. All right. So we're talking specifically about gender, gender identification, gender markers. I don't know. I'm trying. Okay. So anybody who's watching this who identifies with um, other genders aside from or on the scale a range of gender, be gentle with me in the comments because I will try to use the best pronouns and the best terminology, but know that I'm learning it. Okay, so be kind. <laughs> All right, so gender, let's talk about it. Can you explain it from an afterlife perspective? Because I think in human body, we, I, we readily, social norms readily look to physical body characteristics and traits, specific organs, the absence of specific organs externally, etc., to mark gender, mark gender, right? And then we are put into categories with gender norms and social roles and all this stuff, which is a crock of crap, just so you know. Born and raised a feminist. So for me, that's like, oh, never been a good vibe anyway, which I appreciate you doing the cooking, Robin. Thank you for that. So little dig on uh, social roles there. All right. All right. So, oh, geez, Louise. Do I have a tissue? I think I do because my eyes are just so sensitive today. <sighs> Pollen in the air and bright sunlight, but it's beautiful and I want to connect with you guys. And also I get really sensitive when I channel, I notice that. So I'm stumbling with my words here. Let me feel the energy. I don't have a gender conversation. This is super important. And I really want to honor my viewers that get it. So, outside of the physical body, talk to me about gender. I know, I know, angels are androgynous. They're both masculine and feminine energies. And I've always said, hey, everybody's both, especially during political season. I'm always like, oh, it's so funny when people are so... And then I say homophobic, which I know is separate because that's the orient the sexual orientation of someone, not the gender separate. So I get that it's separate now, but I've always said in the past, like these people that are super ultra homophobic, it's like dudes and dudettes, don't you know? You have been a she he. You have been a non-gendered energy, which is spirit. And is spirit is our souls, are our souls all genders? All the variations of gender or are, are there literally just two or do we have alignments like how does that work talk to me about gender and spirit form mm. he says oh it's so funny you guys he looks like the genie from aladdin kind of he's not blue though <laughs> that would he says that would be my choice of expression but i do not choose that today but he has like a turban hat on and he's like sitting on this rug like the little floating magic rug and he's like all-knowing all like he's trying to like be all-knowing this mystical wizardry kind of I know all I know all kind of a thing right so he says it would blow your mind like he literally shows me a pot boiling and like poof, the lid blowing off he says, you think you people have fires in your air fryers? It's kind of like that. Imagine your belly being an air fryer. Robin Williams, imagine your belly being an air fryer and having a fire in that thing and <laughs> just blowing the whole opening off. He says, that's kind of what would happen if you really understood or integrated the concepts of gender. He says, gender is just another level of it not just because it's extremely important for many people and let's not disrespect that in their word choice my translation it is a truth in alignment 
encompassing the understanding of the wholeness of a one, which means not the absence of gender, but the inclusion, best word I can use you guys. No, he says cohesive, cohesive. He says, it's not even diversity. He says, Bridget, you gotta understand this. Cause I've kind of said, oh, well it's like diversity. So two big issues, cultural diversity, gender diversity. I mean, there's all sorts of family diversity. I mean, there's all these things, there's all these social kind of norms or constructs that we operate with then. And when something isn't what like a majority or a group of people get together, not even a majority anymore, let me just say, a group of get, people get together and have had this forever and ever and they just pass it on lineage, 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 generation to generation to generation. Eventually things outside it come in and impact and influence and cause a change or a, a uh, turning over of the old structure. And what happens is people, he's showing me this kind of energy of what happens is people come, this is a big thought block from him, okay? And I'm trying to describe it as best I can. People hold on tight to those values, which is what you'll see now. People swing back to these deep, for lack of a better term, deep Christian religious values, which I know is also categorizing, and I don't mean it in a negative way. I'm just, I it's obvious that people go back to, and what your family taught you, like right from wrong, and oh my gosh, for lack of a better term, black and white, oh my gosh, that, see how terms, you guys, words, phrases are so important and impactful, and that, that concept is in and of itself, the way you use the term and understand it, is embedded negative. <laughs> Do you see? So that alone, like my own constructs and my own structures inside of my beliefs are, are starting to kind of realign and move into different levels of being and understanding. So how is our spirit? Okay, so I don't want to skip ahead to that because I'm getting all this infused knowledge. I want you guys to understand what's going through here. So, so the diversity of gender, like the diversity of culture or the diversity of political views or the diversity of, I mean, anything. It could be literally anything. But he said, it's not that. That is so, it's like that's making it so minute and so specifically, so specific that it's able to be processed by the mind. And he says, your mind cannot process this. He said, this is why there is an awakening. This is why people are so overworked in their heart and the heart chakra and the feeling and the sensory and the emotions and the relationships and everything is really strained and maxed out because the old systems don't work. And he says, kind of, he's showing me like an old house with like um, different amps or voltages of electricity that's running in the house. And you have to, in order to be able to process all the new technology and generation of things, appliances and such like the air fryer or the phones etc you have to up uh, redo the wiring in the house it's the same thing that's happening he says to many of you he says and it's it's not comfortable and it's a painful process and it's not about growth it's about rewiring it's about reworking our standards and our our standards of belief systems and so he says this is going to be a generational change wow wow Wow. Okay, that's the first time I've heard that because I've been working with this for about a month now, this energies, these energies and trying to understand kind of this whole gender thing and how it fits with spirituality and human expression and, and, and how it relates to us in our relationships and in the world and all that. And so much sensitivity around it and rightfully so, understandably. And it feels relatively new to me, but it's not, probably not new actually. So it's new in my experience of awareness. How about that? Let's say that. So generation, it's going to take a generation. Like my children and their children are going to be at a point where there are some new social norms that, and he says, but you'll settle in. He says, but here's the thing to be aware of. You're going to settle into patterns. You're going to settle into standards again. They'll just be different. He says, and then a couple generations after that, there'll be this shakeup again, and that's what happens. He said, it's it's just this process of unearthing, overturning, tilling the soil kind of a thing, you guys. So that's what's happening right now with gender, right? He says, yeah. He said, yes, it's happened with race. 
you're watching it happen. It's not a one and done, you flip the pancake over, it's done. And he's like, it's not done, it's not like that. You know, this is one meal, one piece of the meal. This isn't the whole nurturing nutrients that your body needs to grow and expand for years and years and years to come. This is one meal. He said, that's what the experiences have been in the last year and a half in regards to race. I'm like, whoa. And he's like, so the gender, gender is a piece of, it's not unveiling. It's the piece of uncovering what has already all, always been there below the surface. And that is the constraints of traditional gender norms and the constraints of traditional gender roles in society. And he says that leads into, Bridget, what you were raised as women are strong and girls are powerful and, and never underestimate the power of a woman and all the things your dad and your mom taught you about being a girl, being a woman, and to claim what you need, what is right for you, what is fair, what is just in relationship to your work environment, in relationship to job fairness, in relationship to non-discrimination, all of that, all of it. And it's not just accepting or rejecting the traditional roles. It is, he said, it's far deeper than that. So the feminism, the feminist movement, and then he shows me like in the 60s, like, related to gender specifically the and then he says oh, this is a bad I don't want to limit but he says like the gay movement is what that's the best those are the best two words that come together I know orientation is a total variety now but back it was coming to public it was coming into it's coming out of the homes and into life, all other aspects of life. I don't know how to explain this right. I'm not explaining this right. Yeah, l without being so cliche, like the coming out of the closet thing. That's horrible to say it that way because it's so limited and minimal, but you guys know what I mean. I'm really struggling with this because sensitively wise, like clair clairsentience in my heart, I feel so like I just love everyone and I want to honor everybody that's watching as a a viewer and understanding that people are going to be there's going to be the person that's just like a lot of dogma with their you know catholic upbringing not to dig on the catholics i love you love you i love jesus oh i love jesus and and i do actually <laughs> so hello thanks great healer but um i know that some of you are watching this and as part of my work and you're struggling with those things for yourself and then i also know that i have lgbtq plus people who are viewers who are watching this who are like okay bridget you know really you know say it like it is and help educate people and that kind of thing and then there's also this gender piece of myself as a feminist as a woman and i do identify as a woman people have asked me that too early on which really frustrates me but I understand because I don't know I mean maybe I'd be a cute guy I don't know but or a variety of gender let's just say that variety non-conforming not choosing of one or the other and I I feel a tremendous amount of responsibility and I also care deeply and I really legitimately want you to see my learning process because I don't know so it's not just gender diversity that's the thing here. It, and it's not just expansive, not like we just transcend gender, but he's talking about like this oneness and it's cohesive. It's like everything is part of it, everything. The way you act, the way you feel, the way you talk, the way you connect with your source, how you connect with source through earth energies, through the elements, through rituals, through meditations, through... Buddhist practices or shaman practices or um, religious based practices like Catholicism or Baptist or whatever it might be. I, although I, I would be surprised if I had any, maybe Methodist or Baptist that would watch me. I don't know, maybe not. I should tell you guys the story of wearing pants. I Maybe I have, have I shared that? I wore pants when I was in like fourth grade to a, I think it was a Baptist church and people were very upset with me. I was like identified and singled out some of the other kids, not the adults, they were trying to be, you know, they were very 
welcoming and gentle. But the other kids were like, she has pants, she can't hold the flag or whatever it was. I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me right now? Super turned me off to religion, let me just tell you. What I can and cannot wear? Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? Which does lead into gender, doesn't it? It's a way that we move through the world. It's a way that we flow our energies. And he says, yes, Bridget, it's not just a masculine or feminine, and it's not just a third gender. He says, it's when the masculine and the feminine alchemize and they come together in union. It's a, a relationship that is the bedrock, the core, the core antenna for the soul and the spirit. And so then the expression of the body can evolve and change over time. Yes, this is true. As the awareness and this understanding of, I want to say union, but it sounds like then they're separate and they have to come together. And that's not what he's saying. He's saying it comes from the whole. It comes from this core whole. And then it comes out into our energy awareness and out into through then our body expression or even like the perfumes that we like or the scent candles that we choose or the air fresheners that we choose or the way the cars that we drive or the way that we hold our bodies when we walk or I mean it's just there's so much we have so many choices that's what it feels like there's so many choices like a buffet like he says yes and he goes back to and he shows me this little kitchen with pancakes and eggs and bacon and sausage and all of the things so many choices so many choices but they're all breakfast right they all nurture us and guide us and he says so it's not separate genders that's a body choice that is made by the soul is it a soul choice that's a good question is gender a soul choice so if that's the case then wouldn't the soul know what kind of body it's choosing hmm, remember it's a whole experience so by choosing a gender that feels different than <clears throat> what the soul wishes to express in the human life context, it is not about comfort when you incarnate, when you come into the body, when you make a choice. It's not about the comfort and the ease of life. It's about the understanding. And the experience provides understanding. Uh. So this is where like we struggle, we have pain, we, we struggle to love ourselves or become one with ourselves, or this is about that bigger conversation about being who we are, whatever that looks like or means to you and how it's so flow fluid and it's on a continuum. And it might not be focused on the topic or issue of gender or gender choice of human body versus spirit, but what you're telling me is the soul doesn't have a gender. There's not a gender and it's not non-gendered or agendered. It's not that. It doesn't, it's not above gender. It's not that. It's this oneness of all of the components. It's a complete cohesive energy. That's at the core. That's what our soul is, you guys. And so there's all these codes and, and they're showing me um, like sacred geometry. My team, thank you for that. I literally just see, thank you for that. I see Metatron, Archangel Metatron and um, what looks to be Archangel Raziel and perhaps um, Melchizedek, who I also work with as well as a, a spirit guide. And they're showing me that there's encodements at the core of your spirit and your soul. And you know this and you know that there are choices and freedoms for your creative expression, your co-creative expression. And so you utilize the body in ways that best aligns with the understanding and the experiences that you, you, you have in your lifetime. And he says, they're not all, Robin's showing me, they're not all predetermined or, yes, it was not determined that you were gonna fight inside with your gender or your sexual orientation or your religion that you were taught growing up or your height or your skin color or your family of origin I mean there's not there's not it wasn't like preset like you have to have this this condition needs to be here so that you can learn these things it's not like that he's saying it's not like that it is not that way that this is one of the codes at the core of you that you choose in expression of to connect with, to understand the balancing of things at the core of who you are. So this is like the universe of so the cosmic consciousness. And this is really hard to explain in human words, which is probably why my team is coming in to help support this explanation for you and also for me and understanding. Thank you. I literally see that. I'm going to breathe it in you guys in the heart here right now. 
There's many layers to this for your intellectual processing. And this is more of a bird's eye view. He literally says bird's eye view. I don't feel resolved though. I hope that I feel like I'm just talking in circles here because I'm trying to, it literally does look like a moving kind of spiraling, pulsing, kind of rhythmic pulsing energy. And like with codes, with like sacred geometry and with like numbers and all this stuff about choices and the co-creative experience. I understand that and the cohesiveness and how this is the core and there's not a uh, masculine, feminine and gendered alignment for the afterlife. And it's not necessary and androgynous is not maybe necessarily the best term to describe that either and it's there's not a third gender which some people maybe identify with i mean for you if that's what you believe and that's how you feel that's that's your experience that's your perspective and your reality and 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 i will honor your your position and yet what i'm feeling here is that it's just this It's not as complicated as I've come to make it be, I think, with the intellectual processing of the psychology of things, but the patterning of the expression of this, how the, where the rubber meets the road, what it looks like living a life that is somebody that doesn't have a traditional gender identification or marker, that that's where it gets complicated because of everybody else. Because it's not just this internal processing that people are going through with the difference between their body, maybe not matching how they feel about gender specifically, and then the added layer of relationships. And what does that mean in the context of your family, your new family nucleus, family of origin with your parents, but also with relationships in partnerships in the future. And that's when then the LGBTQ plus and the, the, the sexual orientation comes in also to play into play with the gender expression, identity, marker, etc. So, so there's a lot, but if it's one person's journey, it's their journey. They, they get to own and be empowered by whatever they're experiencing. So if you are a person who is working with the concepts of gender and gender identity, or you have been through this process and you know that there's layers upon layers upon layers, wow. Like I am inspired by you because this is not something that is got a nice simple formula and so many studies and so much trailblazing has already been done. This is you are the trailblazers. With regard to gender, you are the trailblazers. I mean, what we are, we are. And I'm just, Like, wow, you know, it's like new territory here. And whenever there's something new, a lot of people think it's weird. Like when psychic stuff wasn't cool, like back in the day, yoga wasn't cool. People thought that was like woo-woo or meditating. Oh my gosh, that's woo-woo. Oh my gosh, are you doing witchcraft? Which now there's whole groups about witches and all that. Wiccans and pagans and everybody has their own groups and vibes just like the Catholics and the Lutherans and the Baptists and the, hey, you do you, you do your thing, you know? And so this with the gender is so profoundly, well, it's very interesting to me. And it so profoundly opens up this like opportunity for our self-expression as humans in human bodies, as spirits, our souls can express. Because one day your soul might feel inspired to express in alignment with one gender over another. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's rather beautiful to me and curious to me. Like, I'm like, hey, you know, huh, interesting. So. Hey, so this has been a very interesting gender discussion with Robin Williams in the afterlife. <laughs> I, I hope there's good content here. I really don't know at this point because I am just like mind blown or my, the door is blown off my solar plexus, my, where my spirit is and just like an air fryer, <laughs> like Robin said. <laughs> oh. I love you so much. You are such a great therapist. I'm going to need more counseling. We're going to have to have more sessions. Yes, we are. More sessions. All right. So you here, viewers on Above Life Channel, talk to me in the comments if you feel comfortable doing that about 
how you feel about gender. Like I'm a mom of like four kids and I'm so open. I'm like, huh, what does this mean for me, for my life? What does this mean for the generations to come? Like my grandkids and stuff. And I'm like, huh, this is interesting to me. And I'm like, I think this is really good. Uh, a good, we're in a time where we have great possibility for more unconditioning of our society and unconditioning of love and full expression of love, not just relationship one-to-one -one based, but love as in accepting, embracing, encouraging creativity and co-creation and this cohesive energy that is at our core, our soul, our spirit. That's why you're here. You like the spiritual stuff. You like the interesting conversations with afterlife celebrities that gives you an insight, makes you more curious and want to know more about yourself and your own intuition. I know that. I know it. And so I thank you for being here. I'm so curious to read the comments on this one. I'm very, very curious. And if you have, so there are, um, the Trevor Project is a great resource. I, that's the one that I have been looking at. Um, there are many, many others as well. I mean, if you put links below, just know that they won't show up on the comments. It's not, I'm not editing them. It just doesn't show up because YouTube doesn't allow that. That's considered spam, just so you know, on my channel. The parameters are set, so that's considered spam. And so I'm trying to think of a good way to share that. I don't know. Maybe on my Facebook page, maybe on my Bridget Inspired Facebook page, you could do that. If I put a post up, um, maybe you could do it there. Or you could send me an email with some resources so that I could share them in future videos, especially working with the younger generation. I think it would be good. I do have um, some clients that are in this experience and so um, families that are and so I I I really I appreciate that so all right. so the Trevor Project for you if you're a kid dealing with this and moving through stuff or if you're a parent parenting a kid that's moving through stuff or if you have a partner that is etc just our friends that do tre the Trevor Project because they have like texting they have online communities they have just basic guides to talk about like gender expression versus gender identity versus um, sexual orientation and how things are different and to help people that like me that don't have a clue about some of this stuff. I guess I'm more well versed than I thought I was, but helps you kind of learn and gives you kind of a stepping off place to go. All right. So I hope I've inspired your spirit. I'm sure I've piqued your curiosity today with Robin Williams as our therapist in the afterlife. Uh, I love these sessions, they're so fun. I hope you do, and if you don't, oh well, some of you do, so <laughs> it's worth sharing. All right, I hope I've inspired your spirit, filled you with some hope today. Oh, hope for this generation, the future generations, oh my gosh. Good vibes, you guys, good vibes. It's your life after all, so live it. You have to live it, please, just live it. You're doing the best you can, be yourself, I totally believe in you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Thanks for being here.